Hey y'all, how's it going friends? Tabitha here from the Bogestead. Don't mind if you see like, oh, it's not you, I know you didn't. But I had some dental work done today. Sitting here at the homestead today, all by my lonesome in the nice and quiet. I just got back from the dentist and the grocery store. And now I am about to just get some chores done around the house before it's time to pick up the kids. And I thought this would be a perfect time when I'm in the house alone to kind of give you guys a little bit of a tour of the homestead today. Let me bundle up and we will head out to the outside. It's really windy today, so I'm hoping I put my AirPod in to film, so I'm hoping. Oh my gosh, this cat, y'all. He like walks right by our feet. So this is Cleus. He, oh, I didn't even have him myself in frame. He is he's a psycho. He is one of our barn cats. Well, he's our only one. He is the son of Callie Lynn, um, and Callie Lynn was my mama cat, and she just showed up on our porch one day, and uh, just stayed. She was the best little mouser ever. Well, a couple weeks ago, she got into something and Dustin found her, she had passed away. So we actually buried her out in our field. Um, let me see if I can show it to you guys. So I don't know if you can see, like, let me see if I can point right there, that little burr oak. You can kind of see it through the brush pile. Uh, we buried her over there by our burr oak. So what I was coming over here to actually show you is the chicken coop. Um, so we've had chickens for two years now. And this is not even our very first flock. This is probably like flock three and four. Um, our very first flock, I think we got eight chickens. Um, we just got them from Atwoods and we raised them from chicks. And uh, we started having an emergence of bobcats and coyotes and they basically took out our entire flock uh, except for like two chickens and then since then we have ended up just getting pullets from local chicken farms that are around here and that's what we've kind of gotten to kind of uh, replenish our flock and then this past November or December that we got these four ladies right there. We just got those. We got them as eight week old pullets. I'm going to give the chickens some scratch so that way. Like to give them extra scratch in the winter because it helps keep them warmer. Now, I cannot forget that those eggs are in my pocket. So, over here, right next to it, this is our, we call it the barn, but it's just like a little shed. Okay, fine, I will love on you. My goodness, he got fixed yesterday, so I think he's feeling better, and now he just wants to play. Was this um, wood right here, but it was rotted. This was already here when we moved in, but it was rotting out. It was pretty gross. So, that is what we are eventually gonna have as like our garden shed. Um, he's gonna, he's gotta replace part of the flooring in there. We converted it, we're starting to slowly convert it to metal. So part of it's actually like fallen apart in bad weather. And so, sorry, I only have one glove on. <laughs> I couldn't find the other one, but I was like, one's better than none. Uh, so we are slowly converting it to a metal shed. And then the plan, so we've got the front and the back done. We just have to do the sides. And then the plan is right here on this side, this is where the greenhouse is gonna go. And that is our big winter project this year that we're doing. We've been saving up. I've been looking at different plans to decide 
Um, I think we've kind of got the dimensions of how we want it. So essentially he's gonna build it kind of like a lean-to and it's gonna be like, it'll kind of come down and kind of be like a rectangular shape and it'll go the length of the shed and then come out. Um, it'll come out this way. Oh, it's so cold. So this is the garden that you guys have seen before. Obviously it doesn't have the fence around it. It's lined up here. Justin took this off the other day because we're preparing to uh, winter, kind of not really, it's not so much winterize the garden, but we're gonna, we're start, gonna start amending it and getting it ready for our spring harvest. So we live in the flight path. We live, we live right near the air, one of the Air Force bases. And so we're right in a flight path. So if you ever hear planes or jets flying overhead, that's why. So that's the main garden area right there. And that's where uh, our next process, now that we've pulled the fence out, is we are going to lay leaves down and compost and till that all in. And then we're gonna put a weed, uh, woven weed fa fabric down. This over here is the raised bed. So this, uh, this was actually our very first garden that we did at, when we moved here. And we had planted lettuce and bok choy and uh, what was, I think, strawberries and onions. And we had no idea what we were doing. Um, but now, so this one was, this is a lot of the fall stuff that I planted. I need to actually harvest those that cabbage. I've still got kale, I've got arugula. Um, those were our peppers right there, PS, PSA. Do not plant in, in metal containers, galvanized tubs. They get too hot in the summer. Uh, we've also got a couple peach trees and we've got a couple apple trees. Our apples are still really new. They're only a couple years old, so we haven't bared any fruit from them yet. Our peach trees have bared fruit the last two years, but last year was our best crop yet. And then we got a massive hailstorm. I'm talking like softball size hail and it completely ruined our peaches. This out here is the shop. So the main part of what we live on, we call this part like the homestead. <laughs> but that is roughly about two acres behind me where the shop is and then this pasture beyond is about three acres where the animal farm essentially will be uh, right now we are raising a um a beef steer at our friend's house we're gonna actually half the cow and we've just been helping with um, the financial side of it, of raising it, feeding it, and everything, and then obviously to have it uh, processed. It'll be ready for process at, I think, the end of April. I'm gonna go inside because it's really freaking cold. Because I've kind of given you guys enough of the tour, but I'm like freezing. I can't wait to have the greenhouse because that'll be like my chill area. <laughs> okay. So what I was saying is that I think the world has realized how fragile our food system and our food industry is. And uh, the cat has lost his mind, y'all. Back to what I was saying. Our big plan for this year is to get pigs to raise and process ourselves, to put pork in the freezer for our family. Uh, we will have half of a cow. We are splitting the cow with a friend, the, the friend who is keeping the cow at his place because our pasture, we call that our pasture, uh, needs a fence. And so that's obviously gonna take money, but the greenhouse is taking precedence because that's food and sustenance that we can give right now immediately. Um, and with raising animals, not only do we need to have a fence for them to keep them in and keep them safe, but we also need to get like a guardian dog to help like to help keep our livestock safe. We also need to build shelters for them. So there's a lot more financially upfront that it takes to be able to start those ventures. Whereas gardening is like immediate and it doesn't, I mean, it can have a really huge initial cost depending on how big or what capacity you want to do it in. But it also doesn't have to be like, I, this is the first year that we will we'll hopefully have a greenhouse. I've always just either started seeds in the house or I've bought starters from the store. So, and have been able to get plentiful bounty from that. So don't overthink it. Um, what is that? Oh, 
of our kind of future plan for the garden or for the homestead is that I talked about the cow. Eventually we will raise our own steer on our own land here. Now, because our space is not that big, we really only have the capacity to be able to raise one cow. Uh, and eventually I would like to be able to have dairy cows, but that's not something that would be plausible where we're living because we don't have enough pasture to be able to like grass feed a cow, um, a mama cow and a calf and a steer and all of that. So eventually we'll, that means that we will obviously have to move and upgrade and get more land and that is in our future plan. But as of right now, I want to use what we have to serve us. You guys, I forgot that I had those eggs in my pocket and I just took my jacket off. Hold please. <laughs> the beauty of fresh yard eggs is that the shell is much harder so they did not break in my pocket so kind of the three year ish plan will be goats that is kind of so pigs will be our next pigs and a steer will be like our next big farm animal wise while we're growing our chicken stock <laughs> uh and then eventually it will be goats to do uh to have milk goats and we'll see how you know how that goes uh next this year the other big thing that we want to raise our are our own meat chickens shifting into the garden i thought i would just share with you guys a few of the things that i did purchase like i said i got all of my stuff from baker creek uh i have had great success with them i've just that's the, really the only place i've ever ordered from I also last year ordered from Botanical Interest. I got things that I obviously knew we were going to grow that we would eat, but also I ordered new things that we haven't tried before, things that we've never grown before, just to kind of see how they do. I also learned a few things from last year, like we definitely, we only grew one pepper plant, a jalapeno, and we should have grown much more than that. That's kind of a thing you wanna make note, always have some type of a journal to kind of keep track of those things, so that way you know the next season what to do and what not to do. So we ordered banana peppers, a couple packages of those, some shishito peppers. This one was one that uh, Roots and Refuge Farm recommended she likes to like scorch them in the pan i got some habanadas which is like a habanero without the heat some serrano peppers cayenne peppers because i want to make our own like powder so you dehydrate them and then you can make your your own seasoning with it i've got some lisa lisa i don't know these just looked really pretty <laughs> honestly why i ordered them and the reviews on them were really really great and then I've got some poblano and then another package of jalapeno. Uh, tomatoes was another one I got a lot of just because I wanna make salsa, tomato sauce, tomato paste, and pasta sauce and like a marinara sauce. I wanna be able to can that this, um, this coming fall. So I got some Tappy's Heritage, uh, Martino's Roma, Amarilla, which is a tomatillo, a Bonnie Best tomato, and then a Verde tomatillo, which those are really good for like your salsas and such. I also got some ground cherries, just just one package. I've never had them before, but they sound really delightful, like a good little treat and snack, so I got those. The strawberries are for Ella's garden. These are the ones that she picked out that she wants to grow. Uh, eggplant, so I've ordered these. This is the second time I've ordered them. We've not had great germination with them. I don't know if maybe it was a bad package or a bad uh, seed batch that we got so we're gonna try them again but these are casper eggplant they're the white eggplant we got celery so that we can make like our own stock is basically why i got this for soups and stuff uh i don't really like celery itself by itself but i do like it in soups and stews and cucumbers these are the gherkins they're set mexican sour gherkins they're good for pickling and so that's why I got these and like fermentation. And then I also, where does it at? I don't see it, but I did order, uh, oh, here it is, a market morph, which is a good slice or cucumber. So this is good for like your salads and stuff. We've got some peas. I've never done peas before. So I've got these degrage peas. And then these are sugar snap peas. This one right here, this is the dragon tongue. I didn't get any of these last year because they were already sold out. So I was really excited to snag these. I just think they're really beautiful, but they're really delicious too. They're good raw or cooked. And then uh, purple hole pink eye and old timer cow peas. 
This is uh, this is a what do you call that? Whenever you have to get the pee out of the shelling. Shelling. <laughs> These you have to shell. <laughs> so I have been told to be careful with this because it's a tedious task and it's something that has to be done. But that's why I have little fingers. That's why I had children so that they can, this will be their job. So we got these and then I got okra, mostly for Justin because I don't really like okra, but I have heard if you roast it because I didn't grow up with okra. So I've heard that if you roast it, it takes that like sliminess away. So I'm hoping that's what will happen. Oh, and they did send me a free seed packet. They always send you a free seed packet with every, most I think seed companies do send you free seeds with each order. And they sent me this really beautiful Russian red kale. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. I love beautiful foliage like that. Like I can eat it and look at it and it's beautiful too. Sign me up. So that's everything that I got from Baker Creek. I gotta go. Peace and love. Bye. figure out a good sign off or maybe I just sign off okay bye